Well, you can, you can program iOS unless you were on. It's like those freaking pyramid schemes. Well, you, you it's, it's amazing. I mean, any, any kind of computer class because I bought a Mac because they play Windows. Hey, Windows is there. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I actually love it because it, I don't know, it just thinks more like me. I'm like, if I were this, where would I put that? Here. Ha, there is. <laughs> Windows, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> The professor held and said the best. Us computer scientists, we are not normal. And the first, the, by the time you realize it, it's, you're too far in. You're going to be crazy forever. So, Except that everything you think is crazy. You're going to have to send it to normal people, actually. <laughs> During my presentation. Yeah, that's good. Which would explain a lot about Microsoft. OK, we're going to get started here. Um, so last time, we kind of jumped in with two feet into Photoshop and covered a lot of ground really fast. This week we're going to slow down a little bit and revisit some of those basics. Um, except instead of doing a web project, we'll do a mobile app project. Um, so, which image? a couple things. Photoshop is huge. You've probably noticed there's a million different menus, there's a million different tools. Uh, it takes a long time to learn all of them. Oh no, it takes a lifetime. It does take a lot of time. Honestly, right. every week it seems like I learn a new shortcut or some new trick. Um, because in Photoshop, for every action, there's like five or six different ways to do it. Um, so, honestly, I've been using Photoshop for 10 years and I'm still learning new things all the time. Um, so, my goal with today and this class in general is just to learn the basics for designing a user interface or a website or a mobile app. Um, so we won't cover all the tools, we'll just cover the tools and basics we need. Um, so these are the three things I want to focus on today. One, how to set up your document. Two, the basic tools that you need to create a user interface. And then three, a few simple methods for using Photoshop um, the way that we need it. So these slides kind of have some shortcuts um, that you can refer back to. We will end up using all of these today. Um, so we'll kind of go through these as we dive into Photoshop, but they're here for when you need them. Um, so we'll talk about a couple of these. Obviously, opening a new file is the most critical action that you can possibly do in Photoshop. Also one of the simplest. Um, we talked about resolution a little bit last time. For any web or mobile UI, 72 is what you want to set up. Um, otherwise, it just causes problems and you have to resize it all here images or assets. Um, for print, you would set that to 300. Um, honestly, I haven't found a use to do anything that's at 72 or 300. So by default, it's set at 72, so just keep in mind you don't need to change that. Um, rulers we'll use, changing the canvas size we use, guidelines we use, um, so we'll revisit some of these. Um, the second thing, basic tools. Um, so in Photoshop, you have that toolbar on the left-hand side, um, right here. And there's a lot of tools. For designing the UI, we can get away with only using about four or five of them, um, which is pretty nice. Um, the Move tool, the Type tool, the Shape tool, Transform, which actually is on that toolbar, but, um, and then Zoom. Um, we'll go over some of these shortcuts too as we dive in a little bit. Um, lastly, just a few things for using Photoshop. Um, layers is something that we'll cover again. Um, how to add new layers, how to delete layers, how to group them, rename them, and so forth. Um, how to save for the web. And how to slice up a design into smaller images that you can actually use in code. Um, so if you can do those three things really well, you can, for the most part, design whatever UI you need. Um, and then you can learn the other tools as you need them. Um, and then we might do a little bit of layer style stuff again, if we have time. Because um, that's fun. So let's, uh, let's dive into it. Um, if you want to open up Photoshop, um, and then in that week 5 zip file, under the design folder, there is a file that I believe is called Find Friends. 
um, that we'll use as kind of a basis for what we'll work on today. PNG, right? Yep. Uh, great, I don't have that in my week five. Uh, I like one of your contacts. Oh, I have black and white. Oh, it's a joker. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't design this. I found this on Dribble grade two something. But we will all design this pretty soon. Hi, Barbara. Is there a typo? Dwayne. Oh yeah, Dwayne doesn't have me at the end. Okay. Um, is everybody ready to go? You need to I'm um, doing but I'm gonna follow along. Okay. Why is it the my folder doesn't have my design folder doesn't have it? It doesn't have it? It has automatic, bamboo eight R, city car, and another city car. Huh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, and I can't access the network. Maybe we can get that to you on a flash drive. So your design folder only has a couple, it doesn't have this full list? No, it only has four files. Huh, I have no idea why my why this why this universe hates me. If you need to, you can probably just look over uh, look over somebody's shoulder and kind of follow along and hopefully you can uh, do some of these things on your own time as well. So in this folder, um, there's a fonts folder. If you want, you can install those. You don't have to. Um, these three are Proxmanova, which is just a nice all-around font to use. This modern pictograms font is really cool. It's basically a bunch of icons set to a, uh, a font. So if you type zero, you'll get uh, like a phone icon. If you press uh, percentage, you'll get a check mark. Um, you can install that from there, or you can go to modernpictograms.com and just install it. Um, and also on the website they have the key so you can know which, uh, which letters give you which icons. Um, whether you like these specific icons or not, it's kind of a nice quick way to do icons when you're mocking up something that you can go back and change later. Um, and then I also have some actual icon sets that you can install. See this has whole bunch of them, and these are the PNG versions. So uh, I don't know if we'll need to use any of those today, but they're there if you want to use them. OK, so first step is setting up a new document. We'll use this for reference, but let's create a new file, too. Uh, so if you go to File New, uh, there's a couple settings here that we can change. The name, uh, you can choose a name right now if you want, or you can leave it blank, and then when you save it, you can rename it. Um, really, the only two things that we want to mess with are width and height. So, um, if we're designing for iPhone, the width would be 320 by 640. Um, Android, it can depend. There's a lot more different widths and aspect ratios. Um, however, most phones now um, have a higher DPI, and so on iPhone it's called Retina, and you just double everything. Uh, with Android, it can kind of depend, but in a lot of cases it's the same way. So we take these measurements and double them. Um, so 640 would be our new width, and our height would be, let's see, oh, it's actually 320 by 480, so it's 480 times 2. 960? 960, yeah, that's right. Computer science may just get that right. <laughs> okay, um, here's the resolution we were talking about. It's not at 72, change it to 72. Oh, um, Everything else here we can ignore. Oh, make sure that these are set to pixels, and not inches. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> if you put your numbers in and then switch it, you're going to get very. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so set OK, and there we go. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set up some rulers. So there's two ways to show those. We can either go to View and Rulers, or you can do Control R or Command R if you're on Mac. Yeah. And that makes these guys right here appear. Um, by default, they'll be set to inches. So if they're not set to pixels, right-click on them and change it to pixels. Which one this called? User list? Friends. Uh, this one is called Find Friends. Ah. Are we changing the pixels? Um, if you right click on the rulers after you've shown the rulers, 
if you press uh, F, we'll toggle between screen modes. So if you want it to take a full screen, you can toggle that to make it a little bit easier to work with, but that's kind of personal preference. Okay. So um, when they're set to pixels, we want to switch to our move tool, which is this very first tool right here, or you can press D for a shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When you have your move tool, if you drag from the rulers, it will make these guidelines, which we want to put on the edges of what we're working on. Yeah, drag it from the top. Um, I also do one right in the middle, which if you kind of hover it over the middle, it will snap, which makes it kind of easy. Or you can just wait until it says 320 pixels. Um, this will let us center text and other things if we need to easily. Um, and this is kind of the basic guidelines that we need. What is this view? What is this? Yeah, the view. Um, this is just our basic view. This is just kind of setting up some guidelines so that we can um, we'll use them later. If you want to hide these, you can go to View, Extras, or you can press Control H to toggle it. And then Control R will hide the ruler to shut the rulers. So these shortcuts are on that um, slideshow, which you guys can download later. Um, but these are good to know. So. For this next part, you don't have to follow along, but we'll do something new. This is how I would set up a mobile project. If we're doing web, we would do it a little bit different. So if you want, you can follow along. Um, we'll create a new document real quick. And the width this time, we start at 960. And the height, honestly, could be anything, because it will change depending on how much content we have. Um, you can do anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 is kind of a good starting point. Um, with what? 960. So the 960 is important because that's where all of our content is going to fit inside. Um, I would, so I start by making these guidelines, one on each edge. Um, however, we want our site to be designed wider than 960. Um, so for example, if we go to a website, um, let's look at Facebook. All of their content fits within 960, but there's part of the site that extends past that, like this navigation bar. Um, same with this site. Their content fits within this 960, but they have bars, or uh, in some cases, these photos that bleed out past that. Um, so once we have this set up, we would go to image and canvas size and change the width to be something wider. So, 1440 is what my resolution is set at now. I could design for that, or you could go even wider. Um, that way we can design for stuff wider than this, but we're working mostly in here. Um, so that canvas size can be kind of useful if you need to change the size of your document. So you can close that, you can save it if you want. We're going to be working in this. Um, so if we switch to this file, um, you can do control tilde to toggle between documents, or you can choose the different tabs. Um, you might have to press F to get out of full screen mode to see the different tabs here that you can use. It's command tilde and Mac. I'm pretty sure it's control windows. Does that work with you guys? Okay. So if we go back to this document, if you don't have it open, you can just open it. So um, just open that in Photoshop then? Uh huh. I have to do that? Yep. They open it otherwise, and it's just chill. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you will have to open it in Photoshop. So you go to File Open, or you can just right click in the Finder window and open it with Photoshop. Chris, that's in Week 5. Oh, it looks like yeah. you're tab. Is it Control Tab? Oh, okay. And yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and then my friend's one. So I'm on the old yeah. version. So you switch between the two different ones, it's control tab. Oh, mine's control. Okay. 
So, if we go tab in this file, if you go to image canvas size, you'll notice that this. Uh, oh, good, it is right now. Never mind, we're okay. This is perfect. 1136. We must have done our height wrong on the other one. So if we switch back to this, let's change the image size or the canvas size, our height to 1136. Oh, I know why. It's because. I think it's the difference between iPhone 4 and iPhone 5. The one's a little bit taller. So, where's it, canvas size? Um, under image. I wasn't looking. Image <laughs> and then canvas. Oh, there it is. Got it. <laughs> Mine just has to so, resize. Working in Android, we might have to change some of these sizes. So, what's the uh, value again? 1136? 1136. Right. I got the number down. So, we'll have to adjust our guidelines a little bit. If you use the move tool, my default. you can snap those back. Okay, so if we switch back to this, we want to move this into our other file. Um, so to do that, we want to select everything. So you do Command A, or you go to the Select menu and do Select All. And then copy it, so Edit Copy, Control C, either way. Um, and then we'll switch to our other document and paste it in there. This isn't how you usually do it, right? Because you don't have this. Right, yeah. Typically, you don't have a reference like this. This will help us design it. Because basically, we're just going to copy this and we can get the measurements and everything perfect by having those reference. So, um, one of the other things that's really important to get, um, get down is this layers panel right here. Um, if you notice, since we pasted that in, it created a new layer, which you can toggle on and off with this eye icon. Um, that's really important to know. If you double click where it says layer one, we can rename this. Um, so we can name it whatever you want. Find friends screen, doesn't really matter. Um, we can also put it in a group. There's several ways to do that. There's this groups shortcut icon at the bottom, or folder, no, it's a group. Um, so that creates a group, and we can drag the layer in. Then if you toggle off the folder, it will show everything that's in there. Alternatively, um, if you're selecting the layer, you can do Control G, and that will automatically put it in a group. I think you can also do it in the layer panel. Layer, and then group layers. So several different ways to do that. Um, and then we can rename the group to reference. Eventually we'll get a million layers, so it's good practice to kind of organize these as you go. Um, if we turn off this layer and double click on the white space on this background layer, um, you can change the color here. Oh, that's not what we want. Oh, it's not a smart object, so never mind. Ignore what I just said. Um, okay, so let's kind of get started. Another tool to learn is the zoom tool. So it's right here at the bottom, or you can press Z. Um, if you click on it, it will zoom in once. Click again. Um, if you hold down Alt, I think that's the same on Windows, and click, it will zoom out. Or you can right click. Or Control equal zoom out. Well, I'm doing it incrementally, but. Yeah. Control equal, Control minus. Yeah, if you do Control plus or minus, um, same thing. Another shortcut, Control-1, will take you to actual pixels, which is really useful. Um, I use that one all the time. Control-1? Yep, Control-1. So if you're zoomed out, that's a quick way to get back to exactly what you need. Um, so, hmm. control zero is one. Which one does Control-0 do? It's the, it just, oh, it's okay. very, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's a good one. See, that's a shortcut I didn't know. Um, so, one of the most fundamental 
plays the tool is, yeah. is the shape tool, which is right here at the bottom. Um, if you click on it and hold, there's some different options, rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse. Those three are the ones we use the most. Um, we are going to do rounded rectangle. And actually, real quick, let's pull a guideline down right here so that we can ignore that status bar. What we want to do is make this rounded rectangle our whole background. Um, so, selecting your rounded rectangle tool, up here in the top corner, there's a, an option called radius. And we want to change that probably to, let's do 12 and see how that looks. Um, that's going to change how round our corners are. So, and then that obviously can't tell, it's not going to snap to that, right? We're just getting close to that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, when you have that set up, we can drag our rectangle tool from one of these corners to the other corner. Since we have guidelines, it will snap to that, which is kind of nice. Um, and if you'll notice, on my screen, nothing happened. And the reason is the layer was created below our other layer, so we need to rearrange and drag that on top. Um, when you're dragging it, you have to be careful. If you don't drag it all the way to the top, it will go inside of that folder, and then you can't see it. Um, so make sure it's dragging up above. And then if we turn off the guidelines, you can see our corners are nice and rounded there. Um, so, this isn't the color that we want, um, so we need to change that. So, we'll turn off that layer real quick so you can see below, and we will use the eyedropper tool, which is right here, fixed from the bottom. Um, I is the shortcut, and you can click anywhere here to grab a color. Um, alternatively, you can double click on the foreground color here and either pick a color in here, or if you move your cursor outside of that, you can grab the color that way. But you can't grab it outside your window. You can't. Outside of this window, you can grab it. I mean, outside of your application. Yeah. Um, so, we'll turn this layer back on, and double click on this white icon right here, whatever color it is for you, the layer panel. And then we can either select it right here, or you can grab it from out here. Right? That will let us match the same color that they have back there. Anybody stuck? Any questions so far? What was that last part? So I double clicked on the white, it shows all yep. this. I already knew my eyedropper. Now I'm in. OK, so you double click on that. You can either choose a color here, or you can grab the color that we just picked up right oh. there. Can you adjust your radius after the um, with the newest version of Photoshop, you can. Okay. Um, without it, you can't unless you get a plugin. That's right. It's really annoying. Do you know where it's at? Um, yeah, it's the window, the properties window. Okay. Oh, my oh. So go to window and properties. And then, uh, it's there somewhere. Okay, oh, that's yeah. right. Thanks. Okay, is everybody at this step or anybody need help? It's not weird to step there. Okay, let's see here. That is weird. Uh, that's too weird. Watch. Oh, okay. So this will pass you to get a 10%. Oh, it's the wrong one. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's turn off this layer. Actually, let's put this in a group. So if you select that layer and do Control G or Layer, Group Layers, it will put that in a folder and we can re rename this background. Then we can kind of collapse these and save a lot of space. Um, okay, so let's turn off that background layer 
and we will make this top bar. Um, so, open up our, well, let's make a guideline real quick. So we'll drag down a guideline to right here. While we're at it, if you want, you can drag guidelines all over the place if you want. We don't need to go too crazy. Okay, so um, we'll make our status bar. First, let me, I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so let's turn on our background again and select the background layer. We're going to make a layer on top of that. Um, so hold down on your rounded rectangle tool and we'll change it to just a normal rectangle tool. Um, so we don't need the rounded corners. And we'll snap it from here to here. If you'll notice, it's the same color, um, so you can't really tell that it's there. So if you double click this box in the layer panel, we can make it slightly darker or slightly lighter, uh, whatever you prefer. And then Control H hides those guidelines if you want to see it without. top layer, um, like header, and I can name this bottom layer background, um, whatever lets you remember what they are easily. Eventually you'll have a million layer ones or layer two if you don't name them all, so. Okay, um, any questions so far? Okay, let's make some buttons. Uh, they have this back button and a send button. We'll do the send button first. Um, so we want to move back to our rounded rectangle tool. So hold down on the shape until rounded rectangle is available. Um, and we'll change the radius down a little bit from 12 to maybe 6. And I still can't find the rounded rectangle on this. So you hold the click and hold. Yeah, it should be mm -hmm. one of the very last tools. Oh, three. Yeah. It should be like third from the bottom. Oh, you're already in the Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And we can make our button whatever shape you think looks good. Um, again, it's the same color as the background, so you can't see it. So you have to double click on this and change the color. Um, this isn't positioned exactly where I want it, so we can move it by using the move tool, which is this very first tool. You can move it however you want. You can use the arrow keys to nudge it to get it exactly how you want. I use the arrow keys more than the mouse to move things. Um, this, we could move out of the background folder and make a new folder. Um, it's up to you how you want to organize this. You can make a folder called button. Um, that's up to you. And then we want to write some text on top of it, um, which we use the type tool for, which is like five from the bottom, four from the bottom, um, or you can press T. And then 
type over the top. You can write whatever you want. Um, you select it all. You can modify its attributes up here at the top. Um, so we can change font size. We can change the color right here to white. Um, change the font. Change the font rate. Lots of attributes there. Um, to get out of edit mode, you can either choose a new tool or you can press control enter. Um, and then using the move tool, we can move that so it's centered. So, any questions so far? Do you need a second to catch up? Let me know if you have any questions. If we look back at the original design, um, they have this back button, which we can make um, the exact same way that we made our send button. So we take the rounded rectangle tool, make it kind of the approximate size that you want. Um, double click right here to change the color. We can select that color and make it a little bit darker. And then you can use the move tool to kind of nudge it into place. Um, they have this back arrow icon. Um, there's several ways we can do that. Um, the easiest way is to find a pre-made arrow icon and then copy it in here, um, which I believe is probably in that icon set. Let me check real quick. Yeah, I keep trying to do this whole control each thing that has the blue lines. Different oh, things. so on Mac it's Command H. That might be why. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, whenever I say Control oh, for Mac, just use Command instead. Okay, cool. So this icon set does have an arrow. So if you um, open up, do Control O or File Open, and then navigate to our Icons folder, and then go to PNG, White, and then find Arrow Left. Um, we can open that file. Uh, oh, this arrow isn't great, but it'll work, I guess. When you have that open, we'll do the same thing we did earlier, where we do select all. So the select all or control A and copy. And then we'll toggle back to our design and paste. Let me know if anybody has questions. Where did you get that back arrow from? Okay, so if you go to File Open and navigate to the Icons folder, ah, okay, and then go to the PNG folder and then White or White at 2x, either one will work, and then find Arrow Left. If you have your own arrow, that's fine. Um, but our end result, we want to copy this and paste it. So you can rename that layer to arrow. We can rename this layer to button. And then we want to make sure this arrow layer is at the very top so that you can see it. If we're going to move it beneath this layer, then we'll get cut off. Oh, shoot. Sometimes when you're reorganizing layers, it will get stuck in a folder. So you have to open the folder and pull that layer out. Move it on top. Everything's in my background. <laughs> Which is fine. Um, they don't have to be in separate folders. It's up to you how you want to organize that. You just need to make sure whatever layer you want to show, the closest to you needs to be on top. Um, so this arrow in particular is way too big. This is where the transform tool comes into play. Um, so there's two ways to do this. You can go to edit free transform, or you can do control T. Um, and then you can drag these out to make it as big or as small as you want. Uh, if you notice, 
If you don't do this exactly right, it'll warp it. So if you hold down shift while using this tool, it will uh, preserve the aspect ratio. So we can make this exactly how big we want. Um, I don't love this arrow since it has a circle around it, but it'll work for this. Uh, any questions so far? Is everybody able to get this far? Uh, while other people are working, here's something that's not critical but kind of cool. Um, whatever layer you're selected on, you can change the opacity right here in the layer panel. There's this uh, slider right here, which you can toggle to make things more or less opaque. Um, so if we want to make this a little more subtle, you can uh, drag that down. You can change the opacity of both folders. So if you want every layer in the button, uh, folder to go down, you can change the opacity for the whole group. Uh, that can come in handy. Is it shortcut for transform? Yeah, command or control T. Oh, okay. Yep. Control T. And that shortcut is in the. Um, the yeah. Okay. Um, so we can make these a folder if we want, or a group. Rename that button. And I'll make a folder for all of these folders. Let's call it. Do you okay. to make these pixel perfect like the web one? Oh, oh, when you were showing us going from one of these PST files over mm -hmm. to a, uh, the code, you were like, this is 900 pixels or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do that with apps too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's a lot of guidelines um, for apps, at least in, I, I mean, Android does too. Uh, for example, um, it's pretty standard to have this top navigation bar be 44 pixels high, um, 88 in Retina. Um, so iOS has all of their standards of like dimensions of what they recommend you use. You don't have to. Um, I know Android has some guidelines as well. Uh, so those are some basics. Um, we have our top bar. Uh, it's not exactly like theirs, but pretty close. We can add this uh, title right here pretty easily with just the text tool. So if you select the text tool um, with our guidelines on, we can make it perfectly centered by clicking right on that center line and then changing this text align icon right here to center. And then we can type in. And then by selecting it all, you can manipulate the size if you want to, the color, and so forth. And then use the to the base back where you want. So if we take a look at this original design, um, using the same tools that we've used for the top, you could easily design the rest of this uh, app out on your own. Um, a few things might be a little bit trickier, like this uh, fancy five thing is a little more robust, but you don't have to have that. A lot of these icons you can get on, online um, for free. Uh, but just using the basic shape tool, we can do most of this, uh, which is kind of cool. So a shape tool and a text tool are kind of your bread and butter um, for designing user interfaces. Um, that and then figuring out how to organize your layers correctly will go a long way. Um, so let's get a little bit fancy just for fun. Instead of designing the rest, we'll kind of make this top part cool. Um, so if you notice, they have this drop shadow on that top bar, um, which is pretty easy to add. So we need to select. Um, this uh, background that we made earlier. Um, so either find it in your layer panel, um, or I'll teach you another shortcut. You don't need to memorize this, but it's kind of helpful. With your move tool, if you uh, check this auto select, make sure it's checked, and change group to layer. What this will do, anywhere that you click, will automatically navigate to the layer here in this panel. So if I click on 
this button, it will take me to that layer. Um, if I click on the text, it will take me to that text layer. So it's under move, and then check the auto select and change it from CTA. Not something you have to do, but kind of helpful. So if you click on this, make sure that we have this layer selected. Um, you can turn it on and off here to make sure you're on the right layer. We're going to add a drop shadow there. Um, so we can do this one of several ways. Um, we can go to layer and then layer style and then click on drop shadow, um, which will open up this menu. Alternatively, there's a shortcut here on the bottom of the layer panel, panel the little FX that you can click and you can select drop shadow or you can double click in the empty space on this layer panel and it will take you here as well. Um, and then you can select drop shadow. So, is everybody in this panel? We can kind of drag this window out of the way so we can see what's happening as we manipulate things. So if you turn this on and off, you can kind of see what it's doing. Um, we want to change a couple settings here. Um, again, the opacity will change how, um, how dark it is. So if we want it a little more subtle, we can change it down to maybe 30. Uh, the angle, typically I always have it at 90, but you can kind of see how that changes things. Um, 90 is a safe bet. And then you can change this distance and size to whatever you want, um, kind of personal preference. So I have it at 307. That might be kind of close to what they have. Um, and then I hit OK. If we turn off this, it's kind of close. There's it a little bit darker. Um, if you ever want to change that, there's this uh, drop down thing right here. And you can double click on your layer effect to come back and edit this. You can also turn off the eye icon to kind of see it with it. Yeah. Yeah, so what you need to do is click on drop shadow right there on the, uh, the actual drop shadow bar. And that will take another option. Um, so, if we look back at this original design, they have this like one pixel white highlight. Um, it looks kind of cool. We can easily add that. So, we go back to our layer effects and we want to check inner shadow. And make sure you click on this bar right here so we can change the settings for us. Um, if you check it on and off right now, it's not even close to what we want. Um, so we need to change a lot of these settings. First one is change it from multiply to normal. And change this color swatch right here where it's black, from black to white. That's right. Then we want to change the opacity down from 75 to a lot smaller, uh, maybe 20. 15 and 20 is probably good. Um, and then we can adjust our size right here. Distance, probably like two, and size, we can change all the way down to zero. Uh, or you could do one if you want, it's kind of up to you. You can kind of play with those and see how it looks. Um, you can change it until it's exactly how you want it. And then hit OK. It's great, I'd be better off working with paint. Oh, I don't <laughs> do this. That's on. So when I put the inner shadow, uh -huh. it didn't respect the uh, rounded corners. And oh, mine didn't either. Any respect. So the reason for that is because it's not taking the account or clipping mask. It's adding it to the rectangle. So to fix that, let me see. I think if we added it to the back, it would work. Yep, OK. So instead of putting that inner shadow on this layer right here, we want to put it on our background. Um, so you can select the background and do it again, or you can drag this inner shadow onto the background layer. And that will make it go on the
Okay, um, last time we did some of these layer styles for buttons. For sake of time, we won't do it today. Um, but if you have those layer styles saved, you could add it. Um, that's up to you. You can kind of play with layer styles on the buttons and change it how you want. Um, but we'll skip that for today. Um, so this doing this in, in uh, Photoshop is strictly for a demo, basically. Yes and no. Um, so yeah, it is mostly for the sake of the demo. So for example, when I work with a client, I would design everything in here first, show it to the client, and then go back and forth and make all the changes. However, there are some things in here that we can't use, um, which actually we'll go over right now. So when we're actually coding this out, we can't use this design as is. We need each of these kind of cut up individually, um, which we'll go over right now. So for example, if we want this button um, as an image that we can use in the code, um, we need to put it into its own folder. So if it's not in its own folder, select all the layers that are on that button and put it in a group um, that you can turn on and off. So the way you can do that, you can select a layer, and hold control to select another layer and group that, or you can make a new group and drag those layers into the folder. Um, once everything we need is in its own folder, um, there's a shortcut that I have in the slide deck, um, but you hold down the Alt key and click on this eye icon. What that will do is hide every layer except for that folder. Um, you don't have to use the shortcut if you wanted to. You can turn off everything by clicking the eye icon and everything. Um, and do it that way. Um, but holding Alt is kind of a nice shortcut. Um, once we have everything turned off except for the layers we want to save, you go to Image and then Trim. And hit OK. Um, these shortcuts are in that slide deck. Um, you can check out later. Um, once we're at this point, we can save this individually. And so there's a couple different formats we'd want to save it as. Um, so you wouldn't go to save because that would save it as a Photoshop file. We would want to go to save for the web. And that will give us several options. Um, you can save it as a GIF, as a JPEG, or a PNG. Um, a couple differences between these GIFs are lower quality. Um, they also can do animations, which you all I'm sure are very aware of. And <laughs> um, UI design, it's pretty rarely used because the quality is low. I typically would only use this if I'm doing like a very small texture file, for example, that I'll tile over and over. Um, anything that I need detail for, I usually won't use JIT for. JPEGs can have very high quality, but also have slower load times. Um, they're best for photos. Um, so any photo that you're saving to the web, JPEG is the best route. Um, the most common file, or the best one in my opinion, is PNG, um, because PNG can do transparency. And you need to make sure it's a PNG 24 instead of a PNG 8. Um, so if we do a PNG 24, you'll notice that we have rounded, rec or rounded corners here. It will make sure that everything outside of those rounded corners are transparent. So that when we use this in a design, these corners aren't white. Um, it will show whatever is below it. Uh, so that's really important. And you just save that uh, as whatever you want. Do you always do you trim for every element separately? Not always. Uh, yeah, there's another method um, that I'll go over in just a sec. Oh, okay. uh, so, one other important thing to know, maybe this isn't super important right now. Um, if you've noticed, our whole design is twice as many pixels as an actual uh, screen size is on a phone. Um, the reason is, in order to support retina displays, you have to save everything twice. One is the actual size, and then one is double the size. Um, by default, everything we have is double the size. Um, so the way that you would distinguish this, you would name the one that's double the size button and then add this at 2x. Um, that tells Objective-C to use um, 
the image that has the add to x when applicable. Um, and then after we save that, we would go to image, image size, and then cut this in half. So instead of 66, we'd be 33. So it's twice as small, and then you would save that, and it's just fine. Um, so that's just kind of semantics. Um, it's gonna keep in mind. Um, so that's one method of cutting up our Photoshop file for other use. Another way is we can use the select tool. It's the second tool right here. Um, and we can grab whatever selection we want. And then you can copy that. Um, and then do new. Oops. And then a new file. And it will automatically make the width and the height the size of what you copied. And then you can paste that in and then save that. And, and will that be transferred to the No, it won't. Okay. Um, which is why this method isn't as useful. Um, yeah, most of the time I use the image trim. Whatever that is. Um, so, those are the basics. If you can get those down really well, you can design most of what you need to for user interface. Um, and a lot of it is just practice. This method, though, what we just did is really helpful for learning. So, if you find a design that you like, um, you can take a screenshot and paste it into Photoshop and see if you can reproduce it. Um, it's really helpful because it's slower and you have to figure out element by element how they actually designed everything, uh, which is a great way to learn because you have to kind of get in the trenches and see a lot of the details that went into their design. Um, so a great method for learning. Um, when you do this often enough, you can pick out different styles that you like and kind of pick and choose from different styles and find them to go. So, um, any questions? I figured out how to copy it in it's from a layer from one thing to another. I can uh, definitely yeah. help you out afterwards. Take a look at it. So, the yeah. other place that you go for images of arrows. Yeah. What's a good repository for that? There, I know a great one. There's tons of them. Honestly, if you just Google free icons, you'll find a million. One I really like is called the nounproject.com. Um, it's an open source repository basically for icons. And what I like is they have a huge variety. So you can search whatever you want. You can search arrow. Um, oh, yeah, that's how I did it and select this, and there's 198 different arrow icons that you can download. Um, they're all free with an account. They uh, prompt you to donate if you want to, uh, but you can't get it for free. Um, so this is a great resource. You can just Google arrow icon and just find one. Um, you can download an icon set. You can use that modern pictogram spawn, uh, or you can just make them yourself. So. Lots of great resources. For uh, fonts, I think I've mentioned this before, but Google Fonts is awesome. Um, yep, uh, they have a million different fonts. You can download them all, they're all web friendly, uh, which is great. Um, lots of great choices here, too. So those are two really good references. Now, does it add to your collection with the graphic level? Is it on your browser? Yeah. It's if you want to, because this will give you a link that you can use to uh, use it on the website. So if you are using multiple fonts, you can add several fonts to your collection. Um, oh, I see. For and sure. you hit add to collection, and then I think use, and then somewhere there's a download. Oh, right here, there's this download button. If you want to download it to your computer, um, and then also it gives you this link right here. And you just put that on your website, and you can use the font on your website. So Google Fonts is awesome. I can see how that works. Cool. OK, um, I think we're going to spend just one more week in Photoshop for now. Um, we'll probably do a mix of Photoshop and some slides. Um, more about general user experience principles next week. Um, is there anything in particular that you feel is missing? in order to design a user interface or anything that you really want to know. Um, 
or we can spend more time kind of practicing some of these things. Okay, yeah, we can dive into some of the other tools um, if we use them on this practice a different thing. So. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Thank you.